Hi there, let's do something different today. Let's have a kitchen and cooking adventure. Imagine you're in a British kitchen and you want to make a cup of tea or maybe some eggs on toast. And you're surrounded by kitchen utensils and equipment. Do you know your kitchen vocabulary? Would you recognise the words? Our podcast today will not only sharpen your kitchen vocabulary, but also help you work on your listening skills. So today it's things that you might find in your kitchen, specifically a British kitchen. See how many words you know in this podcast. Test yourself if you like. Hello, I'm Hilary and you're listening to Adept English. We will help you to speak English fluently. All you have to do is listen. So start listening now and find out how it works. The Adept English podcast range is wide. Sometimes we talk about big world issues, broad issues, abstract ideas, and sometimes it's very specific, very specific vocabulary. So this will help you if you're living or staying in an English speaking country. Master the kitchen in English from pans to chopsticks. In this podcast, we have over 30 essential words that you might use in a kitchen. Don't forget, if you've been learning English for a while and you're keen to work on your pronunciation, then we have a whole course which focuses on English consonant pronunciation. This is a subject which can be difficult, puzzling and completely illogical. But if you want to sound more like a native English speaker, and grow your confidence in pronunciation, then the Adept English Consonant Pronunciation course is waiting for you. Want help with things like silent letters, pronouncing CH, SH or TH? It's all in the course. And in fact, I've tried to cover every aspect of English consonant pronunciation. You'll find that course on our courses page at adeptenglish.com. So utensils and equipment in your kitchen, basic items to do with cooking today. I'll give you some visual prompts, but if you're listening and you don't have video, you can test yourself to see if you recognize these items from my description. See how many of these words you know. So number one, imagine you're about to cook a delicious meal. You'll probably need one of these. That's a pan, P-A-N. So you use pans on the hob, that's H-O-B, and it means the top of the cooker. You might have an electric hob, a gas hob, or even a ceramic hob to do your cooking on. So pans come in various shapes and sizes. This one I showed you is a saucepan. There we go, that's a saucepan. So that's S-A-U-C-E-P-A-N. And you would use a saucepan for cooking or warming things which are liquid. So it might be a hearty soup or a nice custard. There's also what we call a frying pan. So this one is a much bigger pan. So frying, F-R-Y-I-N-G, comes from the verb to fry, that's F-R-Y, and it means to cook things in oil. So that frying pan is what you would use to cook your sausages or your steak, your eggs perhaps, fried eggs, or even your pancake maybe. So that's a quick introduction to pans, a saucepan and a frying pan. Of course, there are many other types of pans, but those are the ones you need the most. Number two, what if you want to stir or poke around the food in your pan? Well, there are various utensils that you might need to do this. So you might use a pair of tongs. These are plastic ones, but there are also metal tongs. So that's for moving around hot things in your pan. And that's spelled T-O-N-G-S. And it's different from the tong in your mouth, which is spelled T-O-N-G-U-E. So that is a pair of tongs, a bit like a pair of trousers. It's one of those nouns that we make plural, even though it's just one item. So that's tongs. What else might we use when we're stirring a pan? Well, if you're warming something in your saucepan, 
You might want to stir it with one of these to stop it sticking. So that is a wooden spoon. So wooden, W-O-O-D-E-N, meaning it's made of wood and a spoon. You can see it's a spoon shape. Or you might use a wooden spatula. So you can see that's flat. So that's a spatula, S-P-A-T-U-L-A. -A. That wooden spoon is S-P-O-O-N, just like the metal spoon that you might use at the table to eat with. You might use a wooden spoon also if you were making a cake to stir the cake mix with. Other things that you might use when you're cooking with a pan, this one is called a fish slice. A fish slice is just another type of spatula, really. And if you're cooking something long and slippery, like noodles or spaghetti, you might use one of these. This is a grabber or a spaghetti server. I use it sometimes for taking my boiled egg out of the pan. It's useful for that as well. And if you want to serve soup, then we would use something called a ladle. So it's basically a big spoon, especially for serving soup or stew maybe. So those are utensils that you might use when you're cooking on top of the hob in pans. What about if you want to use the oven? That's O-V-E-N. So number three, you might like baking, B-A-K-I-N-G, from the verb to bake, like the bake-off. You might know that. Baking generally is making things that involve flour. So baking requires things like cake tins. A tin, T-I-N, is what we might use for a can, C-A-N, of food. And a can is like a can of Coca-Cola. But in this context, we're talking about different types of trays that you might use to bake in. So there are various things that you might bake where you would use a flat metal baking tray like this. So if you were heating up your samosas, maybe, then you might use that. Or if you were making a flapjack, maybe you would use a baking tin like that, a baking tray. If you want to make a cake, then it might be one like this, which is round. That's a cake tin. And then there are ones like this that you might use for making individual cakes or even your Yorkshire puddings. So that one is a six hole tin. And of course, you can buy things like a 12 hole muffin tin. So muffins, M-U-F-F-I-N, would be made in a baking tray like that. Or even mince pies, the little mince pies that we like at Christmas would be made in something like that. So that's baking tins for pastries and pies and cakes. Number four, what about if you want to cook meat or fish in the oven? So the word that we would tend to use for that is a casserole, that's C-A-S-S-E-R-O-L-E. -S -S -E -E. And we use casserole to mean both the food that we've cooked, but also the vessel, the thing that we've cooked it in. So a casserole is a type of dish. This is a round one. This is heavy, actually. It's, it's iron. But some of them come with the lid, some don't. So if you wanted to cook chicken or a stew or some kind of fish dish in your oven, you might use a casserole dish like that. We talk about ovenware. So that's oven, O-V-E-N and W-A-R-E. So something like this you might use to cook your lasagna in. It's more ovenware. It's a kind of baking casserole, if you like. What about if you want to make a cup of tea or a cup of coffee? Well, I haven't got one here, but most British people would use what we call a kettle. That's K-E-T-T-L-E. -T -T -E. And you can have an electric kettle. You fill it with water, plug it in, switch it on, and it boils the water. So it heats it to 100 degrees centigrade. Another type of kettle, don't have one of these, but I have in the past had these, a whistling kettle. So this one you put on your hob, only if you've got a gas hob and it whistles, makes a whistling noise when the water boils. So that's the kettle. That's probably what you would use to heat your water. Now, what about a cup of tea? Well, if you think of a traditional British cup of tea, you're probably thinking of something like that. That is a cup and saucer. That's S-A-U-C-E-R. 
saucer. So it goes underneath the cup and catches the drips. But actually, few British people use a cup and saucer. What we're much more likely to use to put our tea and coffee in is a mug, M-U-G. So something that looks like that. That's a nice one. That came from Barcelona, that one. Or another one from our collection of mugs one that looks like that. So tea, coffee, it all goes into a mug rather than a cup and saucer. Sorry if I disappoint you on that one. So we might make our tea in a teapot, but more commonly British people use a tea bag straight into the mug, or we might use instant coffee, which I know other people in Europe don't really like and are surprised at. We do do filter coffee though. That's usually what we call proper coffee made from beans. You might start off with something like this. That's our coffee grinder. That's where we grind our coffee beans and then use something like this. That's our cafetiere. So it's got a plunger on the top. So that's C-A-F-E-T-I-E with an accent, R-E, cafetiere. So a cafetiere, its job is to keep the coffee grinds away from the coffee. And coffee grinds, that's the bit that's left that you throw away, G-R-I-N-D-S. So now to some words that you probably already know. Let's cover some easier ones right at the end. So what are the utensils that we use at the table? Well, a knife, fork or spoon. That is a standard table knife. That's K-N-I-F-E. Note the silent K there. A fork and a spoon. That's S-P-O-O-N. So that one is called a dessert spoon. It's what you would use to eat your pudding or your cereal with. It fits nicely in your mouth. This one here, a soup spoon. So it's kind of like the dessert spoon, but it's a bit more round. We also have what we call a teaspoon, a little spoon like that, usually five millilitres. That's T-E-A-S-P-O-O-N. And this one is called a tablespoon. And the difference between those three, so that's 15 millilitres. That one's 10 millilitres. This one is five millilitres. So tablespoon, dessert spoon, teaspoon. Why that's important, often in British recipes, that's how quantities are given. So how much baking powder do you need to put in your cake? It'll probably say half a teaspoon. So you need to know the difference between those types of spoon. British recipes also use ounces, abbreviated to O-Z. So that's O-U-N-C-E-S. Ounces sometimes grams other times. We're a bit caught between our old imperial measurement system and the metric system which they use in Europe. The old imperial system, of course, is still used in the US. And actually on your table, if you like Asian cookery, then you might have a pair of these. We often eat with chopsticks because we like things with noodles. So chopsticks is C-H-O-P-S-T-I-C-K-S chopsticks. Nice word. Okay, there are many, many more terms for items in your kitchen that it would be useful to learn the vocabulary for. Let us know whether you would like more of this, possibly items in the bathroom, something like that, if it would be helpful to you. But give us feedback and let us know how you found this podcast. And let us know whether it's helpful to have visual prompts like this in the video. Enough for now. Have a lovely day. Speak to you again soon. Goodbye. Thank you so much for listening. Please help me tell others about this podcast by reviewing or rating it. And please share it on social media. You can find more listening lessons and a free English course at adeptenglish.com.